Hi, you guys. Thank you for joining again, Cooking with Amy. So we're gonna give a few minutes for people to clock in here. Today's a wonderful Saturday. The weather is absolutely beautiful today. I went out and I went for a walk. So hopefully we'll give you guys a few minutes for everyone to start logging in and then we'll get going on making our red velvet cake pops. Okay. Like I said, we'll give it a few minutes for people to clock in. Hi, Christina. I'm so glad you're here and you're joined. So today we're going to be making red velvet cake pops. Um, we're gonna do spooky stuff. I was really excited. I went today, um, I went for a walk and, or actually I didn't go for a walk. I went paddle boarding today and hi Lizzie. And I went for, um, I went paddle boarding and I thought, I'm like, okay, I need to go to the store and I need to get some stuff to make these cake pops Halloween. So I already set, um, cooked a set of cakes this morning. So we don't have to wait for these ones to cook. So we're gonna start. And like I said, we're gonna make a red velvet cake. And when we're done today or when I'm done today, I will go ahead and post the recipe that I used. Then that way um, you guys will also have it and you can make it. Now I do change mine a little bit when it comes to baking. Um, I don't use regular sugar. I use um, a coconut, it's called coconut palm sugar. Um, I use that because I am type 2 diabetes and it's a lot healthier for people that have type 2 um, diabetes. It um, goes into your bloodstream a lot slower than regular sugar, than regular refined sugar. So that's what I do. And um, like I said, the rest of us, rest of the regular baking kind of stuff. So let's go and get started. And so we're gonna do three cups of all-purpose flour. So we're gonna go ahead and do our first cup. Let's measure this off here real quick. Oh, you guys can't see what I'm doing. Let me finish doing this and then I'll have it so you guys can see what I'm doing. Okay, so there's one cup. a little bit okay so we're doing one cup and we got to get two more cups of sugar or sorry of flour in here hi Carl happy birthday by the way I hope you had a great day and I hope you had a great day with your family and I hope you're feeling good too all right so all I'm doing is just Clearing that off so we have a nice cup of flour. So one more cup and we should be good to go with our flour. Oh. Nobody ever said baking was easy or that it was not messy. All right, so we've got our flour. Okay. We're done with that. So I also wanted to, I want to let everyone know that, but there's a little disclaimer that I want to put out there. Now I've never gone to culinary school or anything like that. And hold on. I was trying to figure out why it was a little bit light in here. And I just now noticed why you can't really see, or I feel like I can't see. I forgot to turn my light on. So back to my disclaimer, I just want to let people know that I did not go to culinary school or anything like that. I am fourth generation of being taught how to cook from scratch. We, My mom's always done it. My great grandma's done it. My, mom, my grandma's done it. And of course my mom. So I may not do everything the traditional way is, but that's okay. It's cooking and it's supposed to be fun. Okay, so this is what I'm doing is so I have down a cup and a half of um, coconut palm sugar. I think what I did on the first batch, I only did one cup 
of um, coconut palm sugar. And this is what I'm using right now. So this is what it looks like. So it's just this yummy brown sugar. It's delicious and I love it because it has like this yummy nutty flavor, but it's not overpowering. So when you cook it in, in, um, in something like this, you're not gonna taste it. You're not gonna taste the difference that you didn't use regular white sugar. Um, matter of fact, I think it tastes better because it's not so overwhelming and it's not so sweet. And again, to me, it's healthier. All right, so I'm just doing, I'm this time I'm just doing a cup. Like I said, on my recipe, I have a cup and a half, but I'm only doing one cup and I kind of liked it because, I mean, I tasted the other batch that I made already because I kind of wanted to make sure it tastes good. So that way, if I needed to make this one and add that extra cup or extra half a cup, then I could have. I'm gonna have to go get some more of this. I'm almost. Okay, so that's good enough. All right, throw that in there. All right, so the next thing we have is half a cup of cornstarch. So one thing about cornstarch, you can either use, you know, just your regular cornstarch, or what I usually like to use if I have it, but I don't have enough, I think, to make this recipe. And this is why I'm using this one, because I actually had this one for something else, is I like to use arrowroot. Arrowroot is another alternative. And I think a lot of people that are gluten-free use the arrowroot. I can't remember, don't quote me on that, but there's a reason why I got, I got arrowroot for something else. And then when I looked up into about arrowroot, it was like another substitute for cornstarch. All right, so we almost got a half a cup of this. Now, my measurings aren't all that great. Yeah, it's good enough, it's perfect. The last one I did like this turned out fine. This one will too. All right, so now this is everyone's other favorite part. The next thing we're going to put in is unsweet, unsweetened cocoa powder. See, in the cocoa powder, we need half a cup. So I am think I might, whoops, I want to be careful with that because I'm going to use that a little bit later. I used that one for the, my red dye. If you guys didn't see it, it was a knife. Okay, so this one here is I'm using a special, um, special dark chocolate. And I think because I didn't have enough of just my regular, but I have both of them here just in case I don't have enough. But I think I might have enough of this chocolate, the dark chocolate, that we should be okay. And we'll just look out. I think we just kind of go over what's left in there. Yeah, we're just a smidge shy. So what I'm gonna do is just take just a couple scoops of those, put in there, and it should be fine. It's not gonna make a difference whether it's dark chocolate, light chocolate. Chocolate is chocolate, you guys. Okay, all right, let's see what else do we need. So, I am making a mess here, sorry. All right, so we're gonna do some baking soda. We're gonna use one tablespoon, yes, one tablespoon of baking soda. my baking soda go right over here I put it in my wet ingredients Shame. let's see baking soda all right so I'm gonna do one tablespoon now this one here I don't like to kind of like I like to make sure that these are like kind of like on point of measurements because one it's baking soda and I think there was one time I got god have you ever made that when you're cooking and you make a mistake and you put too much baking soda instead of baking powder or you did the vice versa and you kind of did it backwards yeah that's me baking soda baking powder hi sandy i am so glad you guys are here so i am baking today we are baking a red velvet cake we are making cake pops which i'm kind of excited to do i've never done this before um so we're all learning together all right, so the next thing that I am putting on here is one and a half teaspoons of baking powder. So there is one, and then our 
other half. There we go. Okay, we are almost done, you guys. And then we wanna do one and a half teaspoons of salt. Now, I, again, like to use pink Himalayan salt um, just because I think it's just healthier. And I try to do less, you know, processed stuff. And I think with the regular salt, the white salt, it's processed. It's in the processed family to me, in my eyes. But that's just me. Um, let's see. Salt. Okay, so this is it for our wet ingredients. So we should be good on that. So now we're going to do our dry, I'm sorry. We're done with our dry ingredients. Now we're going to do our wet ingredients. Okay. So in part of our wet ingredients, I've already measured it out, but we need a... Let's see, one and a quarter cups warm water. So while I'm kind of start putting the other stuff, I'm gonna put this in the microwave and warm it up. Okay, I usually put it on for a minute, but that's my microwave and it's not a problem. All right, so we're gonna do four eggs. Now, most of the times when I'm doing eggs, I usually won't crack it in the same bowl. I'll put it in something else and then crack it in here just in case you get an eggshell. But I think we'll be okay today. And I, you know what? I hope everyone is enjoying their weekend. Oh, Carl, you made one. How did it turn out? How did your uh, red velvet cake turn out? I think this is my second time. I This is my second time making this recipe. I actually found it online. I can't remember what I was making it for, but I decided to make a red velvet cake for something and I really liked it, so I kept it. I kept this recipe that I, I kind of made. Um, let's see. So I need, so for this recipe, you need some buttermilk and you need a, one and a half cups okay so we're gonna do one and a half cups of buttermilk we're gonna put that in here okay and then let's see then we'll do it's a half a cup of vegetable oil which i think the rest of this should be because i'm almost out of it would I say half a cup? Yes, half a cup. Okay, so you guys want to hear a little trick. So if you're making cakes out of um, the box cakes that you buy at the store, and if it says like a half a cup or whatever it may be, whatever, we're just gonna use the rest of this. So if you want a really, really moist cake, whatever it says, add a little bit more and that'll make your cake really moist. A friend of mine, she baked cakes all the time. Now I'm not much of a baker, but I have learned to love it. And she had told me that. She says that if you um, want a really good moist cake, she said add a little bit of extra oil to it and um, it'll really, really help it out. It'll make it really, really, really moist. So I did that and I've been doing it ever since. So like this one here, I had a little bit of vegetable oil left and I'm like, you know what, let's just finish it off. It's just a smidge more and it's just gonna make it nice and moist. All right, I am mixing this in a little bit. And let's see, we got the bread milk, we got the water warming vegetable oil. So I don't know if I have enough of vanilla extract. There's just a smidge left, so I'm just using the rest of it. Okay. And then let's see, it says one teaspoon Of, what is this white wine vinegar so we want to do white wine vinegar and let's see put that in there and then let's get our water in here sorry Oh good, I'm glad your family really liked the um, cake that you made them. That's a good job. Okay. So 
So we're gonna take our warm water. I have vanilla in here and everything else. And we're just gonna add our warm water. And then what I just wanna do is just kind of mix to incorporate it. Kind of get those eggs, you know, broken up and all ready and all that kind of stuff. So then when, for red bubble cake, you want to add your red food coloring. Now, I really, really want this to be red. So I'm actually taking a lot of food coloring and I'm gonna put it in here. Like I said, these are gonna be scoop, spooky cakes. I really want a lot of red in there. So then you just kind of wipe that off a bit. And then what I do is just mix this again. So you're gonna have your red food coloring in here. All right. So our wet ingredients and our dry ingredients are now ready for each other. All right, here we go. Let's go ahead and put this in here. All right, you guys, we are ready to mix this. Right. So let's go ahead and get this mixed. I'm just kind of looking to make sure I got everything. So I got everything that we're supposed to be putting in here. Now, I hope everyone is having a good good Saturday. Like I said, I went for a walk. Or I mean, I went paddle boarding. I don't know why I'm stuck on walking. I think it's because tomorrow I'm gonna go for a walk. Um, but I just really enjoyed my Saturday. I got up early this morning. I met up with some friends and we went paddle boarding. And it was such a beautiful morning for it. It was like perfect weather, it was warm. Matter of fact, I got hot and I think it was in the shallow part because one of the parts that we were getting to, they, um, you had to actually get off of your paddle board and walk through part of it because it was a little shallow for where we're going. But it was so cool. We saw this cute little turtle. We saw a bunch of little fish and it was just really peaceful and there was, you know, Quite a few people out enjoying i think this warm weather while we still have it so all right i'm just i like to hand mix it get my muscles worked out um i think it's easier and also i can sit and talk to you so what did you guys do today did you guys do anything fun did you guys go for walks sit around be lazy enjoy make a, a lazy saturday carl i know it's your birthday today get this baby going here okay like I said we're just gonna do this part and like like I said I already made a cake earlier so when we get this in the oven and it's ready to go then we will make our cake pops and it's gonna be so much fun you guys I am so excited to be doing this okay I think that is perfect and it's ready to go Alright, so what I'm doing is because we don't really have to line our cake pans for these. This is a really good non-stick. So all I do is I'm going to take just a little bit of my olive oil. I'm going to spray it. I think I just sprayed that all over my leg. But we're going to spray it really good. And then that's all I'm doing with it. That's all I'm gonna do with it. And then I'm gonna take this batter and I'm gonna stick it in there. Okay, so I forgot I turned off my oven. And now I have to re-preheat -pre -re my oven. So anyways, well that's preheating. We're gonna kind of get moving on to the rest of our other stuff. So I am gonna dump this in a bowl or dump this in this pan. Look at all of this yumminess. Look at that. How gorgeous is it? All right. Let's get this all in here. Hi, Kevin, I'm so glad you joined. You went to Bridgeway this morning? Nice. All right, that's good enough for this. All right. Okay, 
But give me just one second. I am going to wash out this bowl just because I want you guys to be able to see what I'm going to be doing. So like I said, I wanted to use this bowl just so you guys can see what I'm gonna do. Like I said, I've already cooked one of, um, I've already cooked some cakes this morning already. So we are almost done with this. I'm gonna bring that cake over. All right, so this is the cake that I did earlier. So all you have to do is you pop it out and just break it up into pieces. That's all you wanna do when you stick them in your, your pan here. There you go, let's get that in here. Sorry, my dog was whining to go out. Okay, so all you're gonna do is take your cake, you're gonna break it up into crumbly little pieces. See, just break it up. All right, and then what you wanna do is you're gonna get some, um, I think while we're scr scrunching that in there, is get your cream cheese. So I had learned on making some of these, the best way to do it is take some cream cheese and put it in there and it's gonna make the cake pops really easy. So all you do is you make your cake batter. Once it's cooled off, and that's why I made a batch already so we can go through this pop process. Um, Cause if not, we'd have to hang out for like 30 minutes and just chit chat. Well, thanks for cooking. So this one here, like I said, you wanna take your cream cheese I can get it open and just one thing of cream cheese should be fine all you're gonna do is break it up in here go ahead and get dirty I mean that's what cooking is go ahead get dirty have fun baking is supposed to be fun and then look just mush it just mush it all in here that's gonna help get that cake all nice and stuck together it's gonna make it crumbly and it's gonna to stick together. And we're gonna to make yummy, yummy little deliciousness. I've done this before and I think I ended up using two of the cream cheeses and I thought it was a little bit too much um, for it. So I'm thinking just this time we'll do, we'll try one. Let's see how that goes. Cause it's still like, just even just with the one, it's getting in there and getting the way it's supposed to be. And that's what you want. You want it to be too overpowering. You just want to be able to stick together and see how it is. Like, see how it's like, you can take it, make a nice little ball out of it. That's what you want. But you also want to get that cream cheese kind of distributed throughout the whole thing. And so that's what we're trying to do right now. Let's get that all in there. Stuff on the bottom all mixed in on the top. No cake left behind. All right, we are almost done, you guys. And we'll start on to the fun stuff. I did find some really cute little, uh, little cute little knives and hatchets and whatnot. So it's gonna be fun to make these. Um, just like the picture that I had posted on here. All right, you guys, I think that is good enough. I think this will do. All right. Yeah. All right, we are going to get a little bit.
bit of a cake sheet. And we're just gonna grab just a good little handful of these and you're gonna roll little balls out of them. And then just place them on a cookie sheet for now. And if you want the, like, the correct same size for each one of them, then get one of these little scoopers. Get the little ice cream scoopers, put it in there, mush it in. They kind of make little balls of yourself. And that would work too. Matter of fact, it would probably be a fast way of doing it. Kind of shove it in there. fast and easy. See how that is? Same thing. Let's just push it in real quick. Kind of break off the sides. Make it into a ball if you need to a little bit more. There we go, you guys. Check this out. It's kind of a fast way of doing it. All right. We're almost done. Now I'm going to do two different things. I am going to make some of these little balls and I am also going to make, um, what do you call it? I got this cute little thing that you can, it's their pumpkins on it. So I think I'm going to put some white chocolate in that and I am going to, um, well, not white chocolate, I'm sorry. But I'm gonna take my little chocolate melt, put it in there on the, kind of put a, a lining of it in these little um, t the pumpkin tins, I guess you can call them, um, so I can make cakes out of them. So I thought, you know how you have those cakes that, um, sorry, I guess I can't do two things at once here. You have the cake and it has the chocolate on around it and then it's cake and all in the, mid in the middle of it. So I think I'm gonna try that. Just do a couple of them, see how they turned out. I got different kind of colors to help with that. All right, we are almost done, you guys. I wanna thank you again. Everyone say hi if you're in. If you're just now joining, we are making cake pops. They are red velvet cake pops. And we're going to make them spooky and cute for Halloween. It'll give you a fun idea if you have kids, grandkids, nieces, nephews, um, just to have some fun with the kids. This would be a great project for them. They can get dirty. They, it's a great texture thing for kids. Um, they can have fun doing it. You can have fun doing it. It's a great family project. And also to get ready for Halloween, especially with like everything that's going on, being in quarantine, this is a great way to do this. So I was thinking earlier, how cool would it be if we can have like a world wide or maybe Facebook wide, um, have a big, huge baking cook off or cooking together. I mean, I don't know if it's possible or how you would have to do that. But I thought it would be fun if we got a bunch of us together and we cooked together, we cooked the same meal. What do you guys think? I think it would be fun. Okay, some of them I am making big. I'm making them all different kinds of sizes, but that's okay. We don't have to cook them again, so. Besides, who doesn't like a big piece of cake anyways? We're gonna do one more of these, and then I am going to move on. We're gonna move on to our other little project. Yes, don't you think it would be a great idea? I think it would be a great idea too. All right, so I'm gonna pop these in the um, fridge so they can cool off a little bit. Okay, 
So we're gonna let those cool off. We are going to move on. And we're gonna do our candy melts. So in our little candy melts. Yes, I think it would be cool. Oh, girl, I know. I know you love cake. You always talk about my cakes. Always my little cupcakes I used to make for work. So I have a little story to tell you. So like I said, I've never been a cake person or a baking person. I've always been more of a, just like, just cooking. You know, it's, it's all I've ever really done is just cook. And the only reason why I've, I've learned how to cook is my oldest brother got sick and my dad was not much of a cook. Matter of fact, we always tease him and we still tease him now that he always cooked potluck surprise. Cause sometimes we had no clue what we were having for dinner. So my mom would have to take my brother down to the hospital where sometimes they would stay there for weeks, sometimes a month and you can only eat so much pizza and hot dogs and hamburgers. Uh, matter of fact, our church used to get together and they would bring um, they would bring dinners to our family, and um, oops, sorry, I just dropped my can. Okay, so they would bring. Um, they would bring dinner to us. Um, we had casseroles, we had all kinds of stuff. All right, so what I'm doing to this is I'm going to melt some of these chocolates. These are orange chocolates. Like I said, I wanna kinda of do something fun with um, with these little cake things. So I thought, let's get these going while we're still waiting for the other, other stuff to cool. So what you do wanna do is take some coconut oil. I'm just doing about a tablespoon, maybe just a smidge more. And I'm going to put it in here and we're going to melt it. Stick it in the microwave. So I'm going to put it in the microwave for 30 minutes just to see. Like I said, this is my first time doing it. And some of these things that I've watched doesn't say how long to put them in there. All right, welcome you guys. Welcome all the new people that are just joined. I'm so glad that you're here. So um anyways back to when we were kids my dad used to make us potluck surprise we called it potluck surprise because he would experiment so we had it was his version of doing goulash now if you guys are not familiar with goulash goulash is basically taking like different meats vegetables i mean all kinds of stuff and kind of mushing it in together and making a dish with it so my dad was doing that and he thought he would make it as a casserole type thing. Well, it doesn't quite work if your meat is not cooked um, because the layers, if you do a layer of the vegetables or a layer of whatever it was and then you put a layer of meat and then, you know, just keep doing like a lasagna type thing. Yeah, that didn't work, unfortunately. Um, it was really late one night. So my mom started teaching us how to cook. And this is, I think, where one of the reasons why I've learned to love to cook is because of my mom. Um, and I don't know, it's just the, the idea of cooking stuff from scratch, I love it. All right, so I'm gonna put it in for another 30 minutes. Um, but anyways, so yeah, just, you know, just learning how to cook and cook stuff by hand, I love it. Um, hi, Leanne, I see you're on here too. Thank you so much for joining. So, um, this is this is where I got my niche for cooking. Um, and anything that we've ever cooked, it was always homemade. Like, I never knew what uh, Cool Whip was. I didn't know what, like your spaghetti, it was all homemade. Um, everything was homemade. And everything was from scratch too. So it wasn't like, you know, I don't know. It was just, it's just the way our family was. Everything was just from scratch. 
Like even with my great grandma, oh my gosh. I remember one summer I went to go stay with my great grandma and my grandma um, and there was this boy that lived next door and he, him and I would sit and hang out and play and my grandma had, um, yes, my mom, my mom was a really good cook. Um, and being this kid, my great grandma, I swear to God, you would, she was one of those houses that you can go to. You had cookies, you had ice cream, you had homemade pies. She had those candy dish that had, I cannot think of what they're called, but they were those little mint, like chalky kind of mints. She had a dish full of those. And then she also had the butterscotch. Oh my gosh. Those were like some of my favorite things. Um, yeah. Great, great grandma had all the goodies. She always had yummy stuff. So anyways, I remember one time that, and, oh, I'm sorry, little sidetrack here for a second. It's hiding. So I remember that me and this kid, my, my great grandma gave us so much junk food. We had ice cream, okay, more than one ice cream. We had, I think it was apple pie because it was one of my favorites and she always had apple pie. And then we also ate, every time we run by the, through the house or through the kitchen, we always grabbed one of those little candies. And then on top of that, of course, you know, we had regular food too, but still that was, you know, ugh, just the days when life was so simple. All right, so what I'm doing is, so I have these cute little guys. See the little pumpkins, it's a silicone. So what I wanna try and do is get on the bottom of it. They have, you can see the little faces. I wanna try and see if I can get some of this chocolate in there. And I wanna coat it because then I wanna take, I wanna see if I can coat, I'm gonna see if I can hold you guys up here. All right, so you guys can see what I'm doing. So I'm trying to coat this here is what I'm trying to do. And then I wanna kinda of get it up the sides a little bit as well. I don't know if this is working, but anyways. You guys can catch my drip of what I'm trying to do. Now that I lost ya, there we go. All right, so we're gonna kinda of go through and see if I can get those to stay up a little bit. And like I said, I'm gonna try and stick some cake in these and make something yummy out of them but if not, there'll be cake on the bottom, I mean, chocolate on the bottom, and it's still gonna be yummy, because I mean, who doesn't like chocolate and chocolate cake, or well, I should say, red velvet cake. All right, let's fill these up real quick. And then I think what I'm gonna do with these is I'm gonna let these sit in the fridge just for a moment as well. And then when, when I am done, the cake that we did make, and I know some of you guys kind of joined it a little bit earlier, but before I started doing this, I did make a cake already. Um, please go back if you guys want to watch this, watch it from the beginning. You can see the stuff that I made on here. Again, I will be posting recipes of what I've made. That way, if you guys want to make it, you guys can make it too. I have not had anybody complain yet about my food. Like if I use substitute sugars, like I said earlier, I use a coconut palm sugar. Like I said, those are the best kind for you. Well, for me, I think for a type two diabetic person, it, those are the best kind. Um, just because when I did my research on it, one of the things that it said, it's a low on the low glycemic, which for a person that's diabetic, you want low glycemic. You want anything that's on a low glycemic level. And that is one of them. So, let me put a little bit more of this in here. Okay, so I'm gonna kinda get these up here a little bit. Okay. So I'm gonna grab some cake real quick. Hi, Erin. I'm so glad you joined us. All right, where is, oh. Sorry, 
I'm gonna stick these in the fridge real quick. Okay, so I want that chocolate to set up a little bit, so that way we can kind of stick the cake in it and it's not gonna be really too mushy and it's gonna do what I wanted to do. All right, so like I said earlier, I'll show you. We made this cake batter earlier. Um, like I said, go back, watch the video if you wanna know how I did it. I mean, it's just basically your typical cake kind of thing. Um, I had forgot to um, preheat my oven, so that's what I'm doing right now. I'm preheating um, the oven, um, and that's why we're just now sticking those in. So I'm gonna get another, do I have one in here? Let's see. All right. I'm gonna get a bowl, and I'm going to make some of the white chocolate like we just did. And those are going to be for the um, balls that we just made earlier. So I'm kind of I'm kind of curious to try these out. So these ones are a sweet tooth fairy meltables. So the other ones I used they were by um, Wilson. I think that's how you say their name. Um, and I saw these ones. They actually had a better price of getting two of these for what it was the price of just getting one of the other ones for the candy melts. So I thought, why not try it? They looked delicious, they looked yummy. All right, so again, we're gonna take a scoop of coconut oil. Hi, Donna. Thank you guys again for joining. So if you guys are just now joining, we are making a um, cake pop. So I'm making cake pops um, for Halloween, just like the picture. I did find some of the fun stuff, let me show you. So I found these. I thought they were kind of fun, you know, creepy, scary. A little dangerous, I'll try not to cut myself when I'm playing with them, but hey. They said not to play with knives, but I think these kind of we can. All right, anyways, so with the cake pops, I let put them in the fridge a little bit so they can cool. And so we can take some of these melts and put them, dip them in there. So I like to do mine like in 30 minutes um, to melt them. That way so you don't, you don't burn them. And like I said, each one, each of these melts are always different. So as you can see, it's not quite melty, but they're starting to. So if you do them like in little increments, it's a little bit safe. Uh, oh. Okay, good. For a moment, for a moment, my camera said I was disconnected. So I, I hope you guys are still there. All right. So as you can see, they're melting by just that 30 minutes. But I think to really kind of give it that melting effect that I need, I'm going to stick it in the microwave. One more second here. So I do put them in, in there for 30 minutes for each time. Um, that will give it some time to melt and then it'll stay nice and liquidy. Yes, you're right, 30 seconds, sorry. Oops. Yeah, don't do it for 30 minutes, do it for 30 seconds. So if I say minutes, think of seconds. You know, I'm always backwards. Y'all should know that by now. Now look at this. Okay, before I even steer it, look at that. Look at that yumminess. Oh, that's exactly what we want. See, and then look at that. You just mix it and look how easy. It's just like, oh. It almost like looks like a soup of chocolate and you can just eat it all up. Oh my goodness, why not? All right, this is perfect for what we need. Now I know with the balls, the, the cake pops, um, I've seen people say you want to put them in there for 30 minutes. Since we're kind of doing this on a time time crunch or a time kind of thing, we're doing it live, I'm not going to, but that's okay. All 
I can sit here and hang out with everyone all day long cooking, not a problem. But I don't know if y'all wanna do that with me. All right, so. All right. Believe it or not, they feel, even though they were just in the fridge, this pan is really, really, really cold. Oops. So that's a good thing. All right. I am gonna grab some parchment paper. Actually, here I'm not. My pan's already dirty. Let's, you know what, this is a dirty thing. Let's just get dirty. That's all I'm gonna say, let's just get dirty. All right. So my cake pops are nice and cold too. They're nice and firm. I am just gonna dip them. As you can see, dip them in there. And then what I'm gonna do is take this baby, get a fork. All right, I'm gonna take it and I'm gonna transfer it onto our sheet. And then look, look how cute that is. Can you guys see it? See how cute that is? In fact, I need to take my phone. Maybe I should squat? No. <laughs> oh my goodness, you guys. Today has been a crazy day. Like I said, I went paddle boarding this morning and I just absolutely loved it. And then last night I went out with some friends on a boat. Oh, this girl loves the water. Absolutely loves the water. Yes, I did do a tablespoon of it. Um, now you can use less if you want to. I like, because I, since I did the whole bag, I just did a tablespoon. Um, and it seems to be working pretty good. And I think what happens when you put the um, coconut oil in it, when you go and um, let them set up and put them in the fridge to let them get hard again, I believe it helps it. It kind of gives it like that nice little hard shell. Um, and also it helps it nice and makes it stay nice and um, pliable. Because I've done these before. I've done the melts before that um, I had a hard time with it um, staying melted. It just seemed like it always got hard. So, and I, that's why I don't think I ever messed with it. And then when I was looking online on how to do some of these, I had noticed that people were putting coconut oil in them. So I'm like, you know what? I'm gonna try that. All right. So we just got a few more of these that we're gonna do. Okay. And then we'll get these in the, um, we'll get these in the oven or in the fridge. Sorry, I forgot I gotta set a timer. Okay, how do we start? All right, hold on. Let me use, actually, can someone do me a favor? Can someone set their clock or their timer for 20 minutes? I figured at least the cake has been in there for maybe 10, five minutes. And at least 20 minutes will let us check on it. And that way we don't burn the cake either. I mean, if we do, then, you know, it's okay. We have this cake pop. All right. So again, we're just gonna dip these in here. All right. So did you guys do anything fun today? Oh my gosh, I love that, it's so cute. Hi Stormy, or should I say hi Felicia? Oh my goodness, I miss you guys. Okay, we are almost done with these guys. I think there's four more left. 
All right, these are gonna be so, so fun to do. I wonder if we can take a couple of them and put them in here. See how that works. Okay, perfect. And I think also one of the reasons why too, because I think I've done this before, that when I've done the cake pops or I've tried making the cake pops and I didn't cool off the cake, the cake like did a crumble and it was all in my, my chocolate. So they didn't come out as cute like I wanted them to be. So it's kind of bummed and it, you know, takes your white chocolate and makes it crumbly. So that's one of the reasons why you want to put them in the fridge and make them cool before you start putting it in the white chocolate. All right, so this is our last one. We are just about almost out of our little chocolate. Okay, here we go. All right. A couple of them, I'm just gonna drill a little, a little bit more on it. Okay, this one here, this one looks like it's missing some spots. We can't have that. Okay, all right. We're gonna stick these in the fridge again. So this looks like it's working perfect. I can hear it when you kind of move it a little bit, you can hear them cracking. And if you see on here, the leftover, it's nice and hard. So that's perfect, that's what we want. Okay. Kind of excited for that. All right, so this is the other part that I, I am doing. So I found these cute little pumpkins and I thought I'd put some chocolate on the bottom. Then with some of this crumbly cake, we're gonna make some little pumpkin chocolate cakes with them. So I'm gonna take some cake and just place it in there. Now I did try and get some of the cake so it would go up the sides. So I think what I'm gonna do is not fill it all the way to the top leave just a smidge right here um, with nothing on there. Cause I think what I'm gonna do is when I take that chocolate, drizzle it on the top of it and it'll go down the sides. So that way it'll kind of encase these. Maybe I put a little bit too much in that, but that's okay. Perfect, thank you, Leanne. Thank you for setting that timer. I don't wanna to have to go into my phone and put a timer and then I lose you guys because I am really famous about like not working my phone correctly. Hi, Alicia, thank you so much for joining. I am so glad you're here. And I just wanna let you guys know that I am so thankful that you guys are here. Ooh. My dog's growling. He's letting me know, again, I'm not paying attention to him. He does it every time I cook. I don't know what it is. So you wanna be on here? Oh, I'll have to show you guys my dog in a minute. But let's just get this going so we can kind of get it back in the oven, or I don't know why I keep saying everything is in the oven today. Back in the fridge. God, look at all this cake stuff we're gonna have leftovers. All right. All right, we got those packed in there pretty good. I think some of them I kinda, there we go. All right, let's put this aside. Look at this, just one cake, that mix that we made from, from scratch. Look at all of this cake that's left over. So far, we've got a good handful of cake pops. We're making these little cake things. Like, you guys can have so much fun with this. I mean, you can make all kinds of stuff. So I am making these because I'm gonna go to some of a Halloween party tomorrow with some friends. It's a it's a game night, but I guess we're kind of making it spookylicious. It's a spooktacular game night, I guess. No. All right, now I'm just getting corny. I'll stop. Maybe. All right. So I'm just gonna fill these up with the chocolate that was left over. So it's gonna help and close it. And then hopefully whatever is left over, I mean, I have another bag, so if I need to melt them, I can. But at least this will help and close these, get some chocolate on them. 
then we pop them out and if I need to put more chocolate on the sides, I can put more chocolate on the sides. So then that way, it'll be a yummy, delicious chocolate covered cake, like a ho-ho be better. Okay, almost done guys. All right, I'm making a mess here. I'm usually not a messy cook, but today it looks like I am. But I guess it's what happens when you're messing with chocolate and cake stuff. It gets messy sometimes. All right. Hi, Ron. How are you? How are you and the kids? I know I'm always making you hungry. All right. All right. So I'm going to let you guys know too. Sandy, I'm not sure if you're still on here or not. But you guys have asked, you know, for baking and stuff like that. So I have this recipe and I made it, I made it when we just first went into quarantine. Let me stick these in the uh, fridge real quick. That, so when we first went into quarantine, you know, there was a huge shortage of yeast and baking stuff and everyone was going crazy and all that kind of stuff. Well, I looked online and I was looking for a recipe to make bread. Now, a lot of people you know that know me, I don't really do bread all that much. I just don't do it. But I don't know, I've always wanted to make bread. So I thought I'd kind of go in, have some fun, figure we're in quarantine, let's just make some bread. So one of my Friti my British, one of my favorite British bakers, and he's a bread baker is um, Paul Hollywood. So I decided to go and look because I wanted, I couldn't find any um, yeast. So I thought I had some and I looked online on how to make your own, um, your own starter for yeast to make bread. It was the most simplest thing. Um, I have tons of cans now of pineapple juice which I found some cool recipes, which we'll be doing later on too with them. Um, but I made my first bread and it was delicious. My roommate loved it. She's like, oh my God, this is good. It's like the fresh baked kind of bread that you get from, from the store, but I think better. So then I thought, why not make it, you know, a little bit something different. I wanted something unique and different. So I found a recipe from Paul Hollywood and it was, um, raspberry and white chocolate and I thought that is such a weird combination I'm not sure how one it's gonna taste in bread two raspberry and white chocolate mixed together so one morning I made some bacon and I thought why not some bacon I'm like you know the sweet and salty kind of thing so I thought and I go why not bacon with it too so what I took is I took a raspberry well first I did a raspberry and I shoved a white chocolate in it and I thought, all right, it can't be that bad. So I tried it, I'm like, ooh, this is a really good combination. So then I stuffed a piece of bacon in with it. Oh my God, it was an even better combination. So I ended up making a bread that has raspberry, white chocolate, and I even put bacon in with it. It was amazing. Hey, come here, come here, come say hi. So everyone say hi, because we're kind of waiting for some stuff to cool off. Come here, nope, come here, sit, nope, sit. So this is, come here. No, no. Hey, come here. So he's he's in training. He we're, le we're learning new, new, hey. And they're not working right now because I'm obviously not paying attention. Come here, come in, come in, house. Good boy. All right, so come here, come here, come say hi. Sit, come here, sit, no, sit. So this is my boy, this is my boy buddy. Say hi everyone. Say hi. Hi. Is that you? <laughs> yes. Good boy. Okay. All right. So anyways, one of these days, we're going to have to get it together and we're going to make some, um, some of that bread. Oh, it's going to be delicious. All right. 10 more minutes. I got it. Just let me know when I need to uh, take it out. So anyways, yeah, I think... You guys are gonna like that. And it's really simple. It's, and one thing I learned too is that when you are, um, when you're making bread, hi Ron, or I'm sorry, Ray, 
I just I just saw Ron's name and then I saw Ray. Um, but anyways, I have some really great ideas on how to make some stuff and um, really makes food delicious. If you guys have any ideas or if there's something that you want to cook or you want to cook together with, um, just send me a message. Or if there's something that you have cooked and you've enjoyed cooking, um, post it. Post it on this page. And that's what this page is for. It's not just about me, you know, cooking and, and you know, sharing my recipes or other ways to make food. It's also for you to share too. Or if you followed along and you've cooked, um, then please go ahead. Please share. I, I want to see what you guys are doing. Um, I do have a dream. Um, and one of the reasons why I started this is I've had a lot of friends tell me that they like my food, they like my cooking, and that they would follow along and they'd watch me. So this is the reason why I'm doing this. And also too, I'm hoping that one day I will be able to get a farm. Nothing really extremely huge at the beginning, but something that I can I can grow my own vegetables and, and food and you know maybe eat some chickens and you know whoever, what else? I mean it's, I want to buy a, a, basically a farm, some property that it's going to be big enough that it can be a B and B, and have you guys come and stay and have some of the food, be my guests. Um, it's one of my dreams. It's, I think food makes people happy, um, and just being gathered around a table, it always makes people happy, and that's something that I want. So, yes, let's let's do that. All right. So Leanne, how many more minutes do we have on the on the cake? So that's why I want you guys to share, like, and do whatever else with my page so we can get it out there. Not only, you know, to help people cook healthy and find all alternative ways, but also just fun. It's it's like even though we can't be together right now, but at least we can be together doing this and doing something live and cooking, whether you're just watching me cook, we're sitting here hanging out and having a good time. Um, yeah, this is what I wanna do. I wanna do and make people happy. I love cooking. Now, I'm not a cooking show. I don't have all the lights and I don't have the people helping me, you know, cook. So please bear with me with everything that, that I do. Seven minutes, all right. I'm gonna check the cake. I'm gonna poke it with our lucky little toothpick. So I'm gonna show you. So see that? It's not ready to come out yet. So probably seven more minutes would be perfect to get it done with. So, all right, I'm gonna grab right, I'm gonna grab these guys. They should be good to go. They are, look at that, how cute. All right. Let's grab a pack of these and let's see here. Do, 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 do. All right, we have a lot of stuff up here. Maybe I should have put some of this away out of the way. That's all right. All right, we get a knife. Cut these open. I think these are so cute. So last year or the year before, I can't know, actually it was a couple years ago. I had seen these once before and I got a bunch of little stuff. I went up to my sister's house um, and I thought I'd make some cupcakes for the kids because I left work early and I thought, let's do something fun. Let's, you know, bake some cupcakes and the kids can decorate it and be all spooky and whatnot because, you know, that's just the ant that I am. All right, I am going to put a little cut in the top whoops maybe it's a little bit too much on that one that's okay because i kind of noticed that these are a little thick okay and i don't want them to break now look how cute look how cute that little hatchet is all right i'm gonna take it let me see if i can move this out of the way so you guys can see what i'm doing I'm telling you, I got a lot of stuff up here. 
and I try and make it so I don't have to keep turning it away from you guys. All right, so this is our little hatchet. I'm gonna take it, put it in there like so, and see, that's why I made the slit. So then what I'm gonna do, because I think that's so stinking cute, is I got some, well, this is a sparkling gel and it's red, and I thought that will work. It'll taste yummy. We're gonna take it and just drizzle it on there. How awesome is that, you guys? Just put it on there. Put some a little bit on this side. Look, look how cute is that? Isn't that fun? Don't you wanna eat that? Oh my God, you got a hatchet, some little blood. I should have got some stuff and put some eyes on there so it would look like an eyeball, but you know what, that's okay. You can do whatever you want. Matter of fact, I saw these cute little hands, like little monster hands. I should have got some of those. Those were cute too. You can do whatever you want. You can take a little, put little slit, uh, slits in here and then put the little hands coming out. Oh my gosh, it would be so cute. I know, aren't they cute? That's why I wanted to get them because I thought they were funny, they were cute, and I'm like, oh my God, how fun. Okay, let's try another one here. Let's do a little hatchet. Let me get... Okay, so these ones kind of stuck a little bit together here. Let's get them apart. Whoops. Maybe we should have used some parchment paper. You stuck really good to this. That one lost the bottom of the cake. All right, that's okay. It's gonna be at the bottom. No one's gonna see it. All right, again, cut a little slit in there. All right, look at this one. This one already has some blood on it. Look how cute that is. Oh my gosh. All right, we're gonna do something a little bit different. Let's see how this works. All right, let me put this over here. All right, see where I put that little slit? Let's get some of that gooey gooeyness in there. Whoops, don't drop the hatchet. All right, and then stick that baby in there. Look at that. Look how cute. Oh my goodness, these are so adorable. These are so fun. Let's get that going down a little bit. Yes, these are so much fun, you guys. Oh my. Okay, and then go ahead and do this little knife. Look how cute, look how cute that is. Where's the one? There it is. All right, let's cut that baby. And like I said, this is a fun project that you can do with the kids. It would be so much fun. All right, so this one here, I'm gonna take and just stick it straight up. There you go, look at that. Look how cute that is. See? Just have fun with it, you guys. Look how easy that is. All right. So those are gonna be those for now. And all right, we'll save these for later. We'll do them off, off camera. Um, I just wanted to show you on how, how cute and easy and simple those are. Not sure what I did, but something just beeped. Leanne, what's the time, girl? Okay, we're gonna set these over here. Actually, I'm gonna put these back in the fridge so they don't melt. Right. And then these should be ready to pop out. I am gonna grab a plate, though. Okay, all right. These actually, these might need to set a little bit longer because they are, whoops. All right, they need to set a little longer. They're still mushy. Okay. Okay. Oh, time is up. All right, perfect. Put 
this over here so you guys can see this. All right, you guys, look at that. Look at that cake. Look how huge this cake is. Cake is. Isn't that cute? Look at that. Look how yummy. Look inside. Look at that. Oh, look at that steam come off of it. Mm, that looks so, so delicious. <coughs> All right, guys. I'm going to let this sit over here. Let it cool. And I am going to call that a night. We've got everything done. I will post some um, pictures of the other cakes because I think those have to take a little bit longer since um, it is a little bit more chocolate on them. Um, so if you guys have any questions, again, please go ahead and post, ask questions, IM me, message me. Um, if there's something that you like, seriously, please share. Share something that you guys want um, to make. Matter of fact, I just got some more butternut squash. I was talking to um, some friends the other day and they want me to make a butternut squash um, soup. So I'm gonna make that maybe sometime this week. It's starting to get into our winter season. And some people are getting colds or whatever. Um, I just had a friend that asked for some chicken soup or some chicken broth. Sorry, I have a piece of fuzz on my face. Um, so I am going to post on how to make your own bone broth and what to use to make your own bone broth and also to make your own um, um, beef broth. They're very simple, very easy. Um, they're very easy to make and I have a um, pressure cooker and that's what I make mine in. Um, I set mine at night and I put, let it put, put it on and just forget about it and in the morning I will, cause it'll be depressurized all by itself. Um, and then I'll just shut it off and let it cool off and then I start canning it and you can put it in, um, in cans and have it for any time that you need it. The cans that, or the bone broth or the chicken broth that I had um, they were sitting in my freezer and I had a couple containers and I brought it over to my friend so she can have them. Um, I'm hoping that she'll feel better. But, um, yeah, if there's, like I said, anything that you guys want, let me know and we'll get it going. So that's it for tonight, you guys. Thank you again so much for watching. Let's keep this going. Let's try and get more people watching. And again, we will, you know, we'll find something else to cook. I mean, I have to cook anyways. So yeah, let's cook together. And like I said, anything you want to cook, Let's, let's do it. All right. Love you guys. Have a good night. Happy Saturday and stay safe this weekend. All right. Bye.